All right, hi everyone. My name is Michael Walter. I'm a teacher librarian at Mirror Creek Peace Elementary in St. John's and a member of TESIC. And we're here today to do an introduction to Google Sheets. So uh, I think Google Sheets is often the one part of Google Drive that gets overlooked the most, mostly because it's much different than the other parts. Everyone knows what a Google Doc is for. It's for doing some writing. The Google Slides are for presenting. Uh, even Google Drawing, which you might not use that often, is for images. And Jamboard is new, but it's still pretty clear what it's for. But if you're not used to using spreadsheets, uh, you you wouldn't have used Sheets very often. And it is kind of intimidating when you open it up because it looks terrifying. It's a whole bunch of boxes. There's numbers you're supposed to be doing things with. And if you're not sure what to do with it, you would be confused. So I think I'm just going to share this. So often, this is what I see people have created in Docs. This is a table, and it's got some great information in it. This is a list of things from my book fair ordered. Uh, and it's great to keep track of all this. But the problem with it in a Google Doc er, is that you can't do anything with it. It's just static. You can print it off. You can look at it. But if you want to get any other information from this, it's it's kind of hard. You can't really. <laughs> rearrange anything or find out how much things cost, or maybe I want to determine how many UV pins I had to order, too many, uh, or how many deliveries I've got to make to Madame, grade, Madame Collier's grade five classroom. And it's really hard to sort through all this when you're in a, in a sheet or in a uh, doc. So if you put this in a sheet, things tend to get a bit easier. But we'll get back to that after. I just want to show you an example of what I see a lot of people use it for. So. Let's go over what's actually in the sheets. Oh, there we go. There's some tab. All right, so here's a sheet. Uh, it's made of a whole bunch of boxes, and each of these boxes is called a cell. You can see right here this little green guy. Cells contain information. They could contain numbers. They could contain text. They could contain dates. Uh, anything you can type, you can put inside one of these cells. And the cells are organized in columns. So you can see they're lettered A, B, C all the way across. And going down would be a column, and across would be a row. And each one of these cells is uniquely identified by a combo of the letters and numbers. So this first cell right here would be A1. This one right here would be, zoom in a bit. This would be uh, C1. This would be D2. Uh, this would be a range of E3, E4, E5. And when you use those, you can kind of make this sheet do some other things. But that's the uh, important vocab you need to know. This is cells. This is a column. This is a row. This would be a range. So we've selected several things at one time. And lots of times you need to format these in different ways, too. So I've got this little word format here. And very similar to what you can do in a, a doc or a slide or anything, you can format your sheet to show different stuff. So I could format this. Let me zoom back out of it to see my menu. Um, I can fill it in maybe with a different color. Let's make it a nice blue. Maybe it needs to be italicized. Uh, maybe I need to put a border around it. So now it's got a little lines around it. And I've got a couple other things to do with it too. Maybe I want to tilt it. Oh, wrong one. Tilt. There we go. So that might be useful at some point in time. Let's put it back to normal. So that's pretty good. You can do a lot of things just by knowing what those are. Uh, right, column range, merge. Oh, and one of the really important one is that sometimes when you're formatting your cells, you can select several of them at one time. So I've got three selected here, and my word formatting is right there. And up here at the top, I've got one here called merge cells. And that's going to actually squash these cells together. And that's one giant cell. Sometimes you really need to do that when you're making a header or something at the top of your menu. 
And of course, that always looks much nicer if you center that right in the middle of your three cells. Michael, I got a quick question. Oh, sure. Um, where you selected several cells and then merged them together with the, the icon at the top in the toolbar. Um, can you also right click merge like you can in a table in docs? Um, no, maybe not. I don't Doesn't look like it. think you can. Okay, that's a good button for me to remember then. Just let me double check. Uh, delete. So it doesn't look like it. No, I don't think so. Cool. Okay, thanks. No problem. Yes, guys, ask away if you have any questions, especially if you're not form familiar with any of this. Okay, so all I'm going to get you to do now is... Sorry, open... Michael, would you just merge again just so that yes, I got it? Yes, okay. definitely. Uh, so here's formatting. I'm going to go all the way from 14 over to here. So I've got five cells highlighted, ending with the blue format one. And merge cell is right here. It's got two arrows pointing towards the center. And it makes that one giant cell. And I'm going to click on that now. And then I'm going to center that text. So now it's in the center of all five cells. Right, thanks. And you don't lose any data either. So if you just want to take three different, say if that was three words in three different uh, columns and you just wanted all those words to be in one column, you wouldn't lose any of your typing, I guess. Yes, actually, that's that's wrong. You would lose your text. It only keeps the leftmost thing. So if I take my I gotcha. am a row box and I try to merge that, it's only going to save the letter I. So let me just merge it. Merge. So merging cells will only preserve the top leftmost value. So if I do that, I'm left with just the letter I. Gotcha. Thanks. No problem. Uh, so all we're going to try now is we are going to make a Google Doc. So you can go to your drive in a moment and make a new sheet. Actually, I'll just do it. Make a blank one. And we're going to make some pixel art, which is just blocky art. And it's really easy to do in Excel or in uh, Google Sheets because you can highlight these boxes right here. And I'm going to use the little paint bucket. And I'm going to fill in with some yellow. Actually, let's make this nice and big. I'm going to make a nice big yellow square, make it all yellow. And then let's give this some eyeballs using black. Highlight again here and my paint can, and I'll pick black. And let's give this guy a little smile. So I've just used the paint can and highlighted my cells and have a very pixely smiley face. I mean, he's kind of nice, but it's a fun way to get used to moving around the cells so you can see what it is. So you can just open up a sheet in your Google Drive and just try to make a picture for a second. It doesn't have anything too fancy. I mean, this obviously is going to take too long if you make a smiley face. What else could you make? Let's try, who's that guy from Minecraft? He's got like the green skin. And I'll highlight and make black. I think he looks like this. Yeah, creeper face, I think that's what it's called. So you can test it out for a few seconds. I'll give everyone a chance just to go in so they can actually feel it's like to move around in sheets because it's a bit different than just typing in documents. Don't just hit the space bar and go to the next line. Feel free to pop in the chat if you uh, make anything interesting you want to share with us what it is. Oh, so bot tracks. Is that what you said, Gary? Oh, no, I was said <laughs> feel free. You could do an Ozobot track with it, but I said feel free to share in the chat if anybody has a good idea on what they're creating. Oh, okay. oh, and Gary said Ozobot tracks. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's a great idea, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you got a color printer, it works here really well. But you know what, Gary? That's a really good idea because you can oh be God. so precise on the size of the cells and do yeah. your black, 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 and then whatever code in between. Yeah, that's a really good point. Oh, that's such a, that's a great idea. I've never thought of that before. Yeah, I found a video there on YouTube somewhere along the way. 
and watched it and played around with it and then promptly forgot it. So <laughs> I can go back now and, and, and find it and, and buy a color printer, of course. Oh, yeah. I think it'd even be great um, for this one if you use, um, you could do your black tracks, Gary, and then have the outlines around the spots where the students could fill in the code too. I think that would work pretty good because it would give them um, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. the outline because sometimes they struggle with the size. So that could still work with the black and white printer. Oh, yes. So oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, like you say, you got the outline there and they're not going to go over and it works fine. I, when I printed it, I printed it off and used it once or twice. And, uh, and then I just started printing off the pre-made ones. But uh, yeah, it, it worked well. All right, uh, that was my smiley face. Yeah, also about tracks would be nice because you could put your lines in here, highlights, fill in black, and then you'd leave like a couple blocks for the colors. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, well, I won't keep everyone making art forever because the real meat of uh, of uh, Omega made something. Oh, Toad from Super Mario. Nice. I made a flower. Megan's is much more uh, complex than mine. Megan, that's awesome. That's really it's hard, good. It's hard to get his eyes and mouth right because the cells are so long, but. Yeah, <laughs> that's really cool. I'm, I'm sure the kids would have fun just playing around with it. Yes. All right, on to actual uh, numbers and stuff in cells. So you might want to watch this. I'm just going to review what the meat of you would do you just sheets for, and that's usually organizing and taking track of numbers. So I've got a sheet here. You may recognize some of the names. Uh, it's student names at the top and a list of different people and then their height in centimeters. Now, these are completely random numbers, so don't be upset if you found out you're only 60 centimeters tall. I just randomly generated numbers. Um, but as a list, this is sort of useful, but it's not very pretty. It's not very easy to read. And if I want to do anything with it, there's a few tasks I really need to do to make this much more usable sheet. Uh, and the very first thing I'm going to do is if I want, if this was any longer, my screen was much bigger, the moment I start scrolling, I lose my headers. So there's only two in this one, but if it gets any more complex, I'm going to start forgetting. So I can scroll down and I forget, oh, which one's students and which one's um, height. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the number one, which is going to select this entire row all the way across. And I want to freeze this so that student names and heights and height will never disappear no matter how much I scroll. So if I go to view and freezes right here, and then pick one row. You can see there's a little kind of gray bar underneath the first row. And now when I scroll, student names and height stays in the same place, which is super convenient. If I have a list of maybe you've done a survey and you've gotten 100 responses and you're scrolling down, you've got you've lost track of which question is which, they'll never go away. So that makes it much easier to keep track of your information. And I'd like to format this a bit too, make these a little bit bigger. Let's bold that and maybe make them 11 and I'll center them too, just to make it a little bit nicer. Oh, forgot to highlight them. Center, there we go. And my student names is a bit squashed, so I'm just going to grab the edge here in between A and B and there we go, not squashed anymore. Oh, look, Charlene, Charmaine is still squashed. I'm gonna drag that a little bit longer, perfect. Okay, so now I've got my student names, my height in centimeters. It's very clear, I can scroll around and see it. But I'd still like to do a bit more. Um, I'd really like to sort these people by shortest to tallest. So I'm gonna click on B in this row, it's gonna select the, or this column, it's gonna select the entire column. And if I right click on the letter B, I get a nice menu here, and very clearly you can see sort sheet A to Z. 
And when I click on that, it has sorted me from the very shortest person, Kathy Quinton at 50 centimeters, all the way up to Linda Little, well, that's ironic, at uh, 148 centimeters. So that's super convenient. I now have them in an order that might matter. Maybe I'm trying to make a list of people for my uh, music line to go to music. So that's pretty good. And of course, I can right click again and maybe short sort the sheet from Z to A. So I've got my tallest at the top. That works pretty well, too. But maybe I really want to be a bit more specific with this. Maybe I need to know everyone in this list who is taller than 100 centimeters. So that's going to take another tool called a filter. And if I click on the word height, over here on my three dots menu, it's just hidden because my screen's a bit uh, shrank, my three dots for more, there's a button here that looks like a funnel, and it's called a filter. If I click on that, it's going to highlight all these things, but I've got a new little button next to the word heist. When I click on this little button, I get some more things. I could sort if there was sort by color, which we're not into yet. But one that's really, really good is filter by value. Or sorry, by condition. And if I filter by condition, I can see some of the standard math terms like data's before, but here's the ones that really matter, greater than or equal to. So I want to pick everyone who's greater than or equal to 100 centimeters. So I'll click greater than or equal to. And then I can put my value in, which is, of course, 100. And when I hit OK, temporarily removed everyone from the screen that is less than 100 centimeters. So I'm just left with this list right here. So that's pretty good. Maybe I've just got something I want to sort and find out just that. But I probably don't need that permanently done. So to get rid of it, it's just a temporary filter. I just click on the filter, and my list comes back. So that's a great way to kind of look at your information and sort it. Any questions about any of that? OK. So now we can do some math, which is one of the really cool things you can do with spreadsheets. And it identifies these cells to make some calculations happen. That would be a bit difficult to do by hand or if you were in just a regular table. So I'm going to go over here. I've got a few things to do. I want to find the minimum value of my list. I want to find the maximum value of my list. I want to find the median height in my list. And I want to find out what the average height is in my list. So just typing these in is just labels. Nothing's going to happen. But it'll be easier to see what's going to happen next. So over here next to me, minimum, I'm going to put in the equal sign. And that indicates that I'm about to do something that involves a formula, which sounds super scary, but it's not. So if I type in M, as soon as you start typing after the equal signs, it knows you do a formula. It's going to start suggesting things to you. So I want M, I, N, and there we go, minimum. So when I click on that, so I've only got one list of numbers here, so it's it's going to be pretty smart. It's going to suggest that I want to use this entire range. And you can see it's picked from B2 to B24. It's highlighted all these. And it just says tab to accept the selection. And I'm fine with that. So I'll hit tab. And now I've got a minimum number. My smallest number is 50. Now we can tell that by sorting. But the wonderful thing about formulas like this is if I added another person in here, so I'm going to add in Melissa Lee, and if Melissa was only 38 centimeters tall, the formula is going to keep track of all that, and it's now updated. So now it's gone from 50 to 38. So it keeps track of what you've got there. So I can do the same with maximum, to max, and again, this is pretty smart. It's going to select it. But normally, you might have to highlight all these and then close your parentheses at the end. And my largest number is 148. Now, it's doing an autofill here. It's suggesting I do the same thing for these other two rows, but I don't want to do that. So we're just going to X that for now. So my largest number is 148. Now, what if I want to find the median number? Again, I'll do my equals. 
median. And it selected all those again, all tab. And the median number is 98.5 for my list of my range of numbers. And the average, which should be a little bit different, average is, let's find out, 94.9. So that's my list. And again, if these numbers change, maybe I say, oh, I've miss, missed, uh, I haven't managed, or haven't measured Becky correctly. She's not 96 centimeters. She's actually 144 centimeters. All these formulas will get updated because it's always dynamically looking at this list of numbers and I'm changing the math based on what you've done there. So I want to make a spreadsheet on who picked up the rapid test, say <laughs> 300 students. Would I be able to filter yes to see? Uh, yes, yes, it does it for text too. Um, I, this is a list of just names, but if I had, so Norma's in here, which is good. So if I had Norma down here three times, and let me just put down the numbers, doesn't really matter too much. I pick Norma down. If I do a filter on student names, so I pick filter, and my little filter's right here, and I want to filter by, I can, so it selects everything at the moment, but let's filter by Norma. Oh, sorry, that one removes Norma. Filter by text contains, here we go. So filter by condition, text contains, and Norma, and that's just the list of just Normas. So in that case, Michael, you would just use the word yes or the word no, depending on what you were looking to filter for specifically. Yes, that's right. And of course, I only want that temporarily, so I'll just get rid of my filter, and then my list comes back. <laughs> Yes, she says, I should have thought more through this and done a rapid test example. It would have been way more useful. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions about any of this? Very timely. Yeah, that's true. And I think Melissa pushed a copy of that, didn't she? Yes. So if you yep, want to try one in the chat, if anybody wants to uh, to try this out, I'll put it in there again for anybody just in case you, you missed that. And uh, one more thing that's really convenient is these are hard to read sometimes because it's all just black and white. There's no boxes around here. Uh, there's some colors over here. That's from something I did earlier. But one really good thing you can do anytime you have a list like this is highlight the entire list just by dragging over it. And under Format, you can see something here called Alternating Colors. And this does a great job of just giving you some defaults here. So maybe I'd like my top to be this nice green color. And, oh, that didn't work out as well at all. Huh. Format, alternating colors. Well, I have absolutely no idea why that didn't work. If you only selected the first two columns, would it work? Because I, that's what I did with mine. And I have two, my yeah. medium and average and everything colored. And I did them separately and that worked. Hmm. Weird. Uh, yeah, I actually can kind of guess what went wrong there. But let me just make a new sheet because I have a feeling I know what happened. We go and let me highlight that again. Format that was definitely me messing around with it earlier. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so make it purple, and there we go. Now it's much easier to read. My headers are here in purple. I'll just refreeze those so it's easier to see. There we go. And my headers are here in purple, and all my numbers are, or my uh, column, or all my uh, list here is alternating colors. Makes it much, much easier to read whenever you're going through anything. Yeah, Christine, I'm really not sure. I, I think earlier I was messing around with the uh, I was messing around with some of this earlier and I definitely did something 
on this side over here with the formulas. Michael, there's a, a question in the chat there from Leona um, about how would you combine information from one sheet to another? Um, and Megan has one specifically about the colors too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll do the colors first. Uh, the best thing to do with the colors is just control A and select all and just go to the paint bucket and pick white or reset. Oh, reset doesn't do it. Remove alternating colors. Doesn't, there you go, right down, remove alternating colors. And they all go away. Um, so is there a way to combine information from one sheet to another? Uh, yes. OK, so down here at the bottom, you can see I've got a bunch of different tabs I was just using to keep track of things. Um, if I had, so here's my basic example, and here's my other example. Let's just call this basic two, just so I can keep track of it. I'm going to just delete all these. So you can reference other tabs on your sheet or sheets within the sheet or a completely other sheet. Um, I don't do that super often, so I don't know if I remember that off the top of my head, but uh, insert. So you have to reference the sheet name. Uh, all right, well, the answer is definitely yes, but it's one of those things I don't do all the time, and I'm going to have to end up Googling to find the answer. Uh, it's not hard, and once you do one of them, it copies down the rest pretty quickly. Yeah, I'll have to check, but it's, it's definitely possible. Oh, what is that? I can't remember exactly how to do it. Yes, it is possible, though. Um, do you uh, click the little arrow on, like, the? it says, like, basic example, the little arrow there, and it might uh that's a few options like renaming and duplicating moving the sheets around okay but i don't know if it was copy two uh no it's a way of referencing the cell so when you say e or equal you can put in the cell title oh i just have to look it up reference Cell. So, christina do you have an idea there yeah, well, I well I used to do it in Excel. I think what a, um, I think it, uh, Leona was asking. I used to have a spreadsheet with um, all the teachers' uh, sick leave on it, and because uh, TCAS doesn't distinguish between uh, sick without a note, sick with a note, I used to keep it all in one running sheet, and then it used to export to a separate sheet each teacher's individual one, so that when I was sharing the information to them. They only got their, obviously, their information, not anybody else's, right? But as Michael, it's a little bit complicated. It's not something that you do right, really quickly off the top of your head because no, I know no. it took us a little bit of time because you got to connect cells in order to make sure that the information transfers correctly. So I'm, I'm just giving Michael the, like, I know where you're going with this, and it, it is a little bit complicated. It can be done, but it is it does have a very specific sequence to get it done so that it yeah, all so stays connected, right? Example. Yeah. Yeah, I can remember most of it. You've got to reference the name of the, I don't know if you can see the top of my screen right here. You've got to reference the name of the sheet. Yeah. And then there's an exclamation mark in the uh, in the name of the cell. And then once you do that, you can copy the rest of it. I just, I don't do it very often. And once I look it up, I'll remember how to do it. But yeah. yes, it is definitely possible. I will find the answer for you. Excellent. And I only did Excel, so I know she should be able to do it, but like yeah. I said, I will be able to tell you off top of my head. I've done it before too because I've had to reference things, but uh, and it's not much different, but I just can't remember the exact way it works. I wish I knew that the other day. Uh, same document, right? Am I making another sheet by pressing? Oh, yes. Yeah, so the bottom here, right now, I've just got a bunch of tabs just to keep track so I didn't have to keep sharing things. So sometimes within one sheet, you have a bunch of tabs with extra sheets on it, so you can hit plus and add a sheet, and you can see a list of all the sheets you've got here. And I think as Megan said, you can do a couple of things here too. You can change the color of these tabs to make them easier to see. Sometimes you need to duplicate them, uh, copy the information to a new sheet or existing sheet or delete them. So I'll probably just delete this basic one, basic two. And I do want to delete that. 
for data one page student yes yeah you could lots of times you can rename the students or you uh, could put student names down here and track their data in each one that does make it pretty easy to do actually um okay any more questions about that which is totally fine That's my, oh actually yes i do look at my notes almost forgot so the other great thing you can do with this is it's super easy to make a chart out of your information or a graph so if i highlight all my information right here and i go to insert and right here is chart that's it once i click that it's going to ask me a few questions so do i want a column chart or do i want one of those other ones it suggests based on the type of information information you have what's best to use so that one's pretty great um, the range here is there it just tells what the x-axis and the y-axis are and I'll just close this chart editor because that's all I really need for such a basic chart. And I can just move this over. And now I've got a graph of all my heights. You can see Becky sticking out right there because I changed her later on. So that's super useful when you're graphing something. Yeah, I know, Becky. <laughs> you're quite tall at 144 centimeters. So that's pretty good too. If you're doing math, maybe you are collecting data with some students and they're putting information in here. Lots of times people do surveys and you're doing graph on paper with things, but you could do it on the computer much easier. And it's a bit more dynamic too. Maybe you collect more information, maybe the numbers change and then your graph will automatically update. It makes it much easier to do. And I know there's ways of linking this information to other parts of Google Docs as well. So maybe you have a Google slide where this graph is presented in and you can link it to here. I'm not gonna get into that too. It's the same with link the spreadsheets. It's a bit more involved, but it, it is possible. And that way your information always stays updated. I got my grade fives. Oh yeah, Megan did do that. Okay, and it's labeled pretty well. This is a very clear, clear chart. Okay, so here's uh, my book fair information that I shared earlier that was in a doc format. And now it's in a sheet format. So it's much easier, excuse me, much easier for me to do something with. Uh, so you can see there's some dates listed here on the side, names of students, uh, names of teachers, names of things I had to order, and the cost they were. So I can use this because there are some things I need to know. I had to deliver these items to classrooms. I had to find out how many of these items I had to order. And sometimes I needed to know if this student had ordered how many things they had ordered. So I'm just going to kind of format this entire sheet. And you can follow along and try it too, or do it yourself. The very first thing I'm going to do is there's no labels on top of any of this, uh, no headers. So I'm going to go to number one, right click, and insert one row above all this. And let's start labeling these. This is the date. These are the students, these are the teachers, this is the item, and that's the cost. And just like I did before, I'd like to click on number one again, and let's view freeze that row. So now when I scroll, it doesn't disappear, which makes it much more convenient to keep track of. And let's just bold that list and make it a little bit bigger so it sticks out and center it. OK, now I've got some information here. Um, but let's also do my alternating colors, which I always find makes it much easier to, to read this alternating colors. And let's pick this nice teal. There we go. OK, this is much easier to read. But just like I did in my other forms, I'm going to first try to determine uh how many uv pens i had to order because that was a real issue with this year's book fair so i'm going to click on item and i'm going to filter by clicking on this create a filter button and i'm going to filter by condition and text contains and i really wanted to know how many uv 
to the title. There we go. I really had to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve UV pens. It's a lot of ultraviolet spy pens. So I can make a note of that when I was working from Scholastic. And let's get rid of that. Remove that filter. And maybe I need to know how many deliveries I had to make to Madame Collier's classroom. So I can click on teachers, filter that again. And let's filter by condition, text contains Collier. And I'll be left with, these are the orders I had to deliver to Madame Collier's classroom. So this is a nice way of manipulating my data so I really know what's going where. If this was on a static chart, I would just be looking at it. There would be nothing to do with it. So this is convenient. And of course, if I didn't want to, uh, if I didn't want to, uh, or wanted to kind of more permanently sort it, maybe I want to sort by teachers. I can click on the letter C, right click, and I'm going to sort this chart A to Z. And now all my teachers are grouped together. So I can see my colliers are all right there. I can see what orders are going to that one. Burnt snow, field, they're all kind of listed together, which is very convenient. Uh, OK, so that's just another chart, which is a lot of what this is. But it's very convenient if you're doing anything to do with numbers or organizing any information. OK, and let's move on to that was just another good example. Michael, can you show how you group the names again? Oh, sure. Uh, when I sorted them or when I filtered them? So when I sorted them, I just right clicked on the column C with the teacher's names and sorted the sheet A to Z, and it listed them alphabetically. I could do the same for students. And it would sort all the students alphabetically. And I could see clusters of different students that they ordered. Maybe you want to sort the UV pens or everything. They'll be at the end. Also a lot of mechanical pencils. And then they're kind of all ordered in one place. All right. So something else you might want to do is this is a attendance sheet I made, and it's got a bunch of fake numbers here. Again, it's missing labels at the top. And I've got a list of people's names and a list of numbers here. These are numbers from 1 to 5. And they indicate how many periods a student attended school that day. But of course, I'm missing my dates on top and any kind of labels to make this very meaningful. So I'm going to insert on the top of this row again. And I need to show how you group the names again. OK, we did. Student names. And these are dates. Now, I know they're all the first dates in January. And this is something that Google does really well as well, or uh, Google Sheets does with lists. So if I put in January 1st, 2022, oh, it's there. I don't really want to top type the dates in over and over and over again for the whole list. But when I click on this, you can see I've got a little tiny blue box right here at the bottom. If I click on that and drag my information over, the sheets know that I'm making a list of very similar, similar information. And it autofills January 2nd, 3rd, 4th, all the way over to the 8th, which is super convenient. Lots of times you're going to have lists of similar things. So you don't want to have to type the same thing over and over and over again. Oh, we got a couple more days over here. OK. So now my information's here. Uh, just like before, I'm going to freeze this row on top by going to View and Freeze. One row. Got more information here. I really want to keep track of what's going on. And I think I'd like to uh, tilt this row here. It makes it a little bit easier to read. So under my three dots, you can see this little tilt A. And I can choose a bunch of options. And I kind of like that one. Looks pretty good. So just like I've done before, I'm going to alternate some colors here. 
to make it easier to look at. Format alternating colors. And let's go with orange. There we go. It's not too hard to read. Well, that orange is quite bright. But this is hard to look at in terms of I don't really get anything meaningful from it. From it. Um, it's just really a big list of numbers that have the dates entered in. So I think I'm going to try a few other things here at the end of my data to make this a bit more meaningful. So a really cool thing I like to use is called Sparkline. That's another formula. So I'm going to type in equal, and Google's going to auto uh, autofill it. Sparkline. And that's like a little tiny graph in one cell. So instead of a chart that's taken up an enormous, enormous amount of space, it kind of gives you an idea of what's happening. So when I click Sparkline, of course, it's going to guess I'm talking about that data right there. Oh, no, it doesn't. I'll highlight from this range here, which is K2 all the way over to B2. There we go. And I'll close my parentheses. Now I have a little tiny graph here that shows what the attendance was like over that period of time. Now, it's not super specific, but it does kind of give you a sense of what's happening. And very similar to the dates, I only need to do this once. There's a little tiny blue box here at the end. I'll click on that and drag it down. And now I have a sparkline graph for all of these students. So I mean, this these numbers are terrible. I just randomly generated them. So there's a lot of people who attended just one class per day. But it's not hard to see the information here presented really quickly at a glance what's happening. Yeah, sure, for the sparkline or for the dragging. I'll start all the way over. Here we go. So equal, and I'll do spark line, a little tiny thing. And so it opens the parentheses, and it says it's looking for information here. I'm going to highlight the cells I need, which I can see is K2. I'll go all the way over here and just kind of move over to like at the first one, which is B2. And I'll let go of my click. And you can see here it's going open parenthesis B2, colon K2. I'm going to close the parenthesis and hit Enter. And then I've got my little graph. So that's one. I don't need to do that for every single one of these 24 lines. I'll grab my little blue box at the end, and I'll drag it down. So I've got my little sparkling graphs. So it works the same for the other formulas, too. So maybe I want to find out what the average attendance was. So I'll do equals average. And so it kind of knows what I did based on last time. So it's auto filled the information. I'm going to hit tab to accept that. And you can see the average of this person is 3.3. And the problem I'm having now, of course, is that I can't see which person it is. So I'm going to scroll over, highlight student names. And I think I'm going to freeze that as well. So let's freeze one column. Here we go. And now, even when I scroll over, I can see, uh, yeah. All right, and just like I did for the spark lines, I'm going to click the blue box, drag my average formula all the way down, and it's going to autofill it for all the students. So I can see what the graphs look like and what the numbers are for each person. So that's pretty good. Uh, I can kind of get a lot more information from that than I can just from looking at this kind of sea of numbers that is present right there. But there is even more I can do. So one of the coolest things you can do, I mean, I'm using the word cool liberally here, but one of the coolest things you can do in spreadsheets is called conditional formatting, which means it's going to alert you if something happens or if something's, uh, a certain condition is met. So I'm going to highlight all these cells right here with the numbers in them. See, they're all highlighted. And I'm going to go to Format. And right down here where it says Conditional Formatting, I'll click there. Now, similar to this, the uh, filter we had, we're kind of given some rules. So it's here's the range we've selected, which is all of our numbers. Format the cells if it's not empty. Well, that's not what I want. I'm looking for people who have only had days with where they attended one class. So I'm going to look for is equal to, and my value is 1. 
And right now the format is it's filled with a light green. So I want to make this alert red. Attending just a day with one class is bad. I'll click red. And now I'll say done. And it even lists my rules here too, so you can go back and check them. So now I can see at a glance here, there's a lot of red spots where people have attended only one class in a given day, which again, that's pretty good if you're trying to keep track of things. And at a glance, you can see. So that kind of formatting works well too for yeses or nos, or if you've collected information from a Google form, uh, like rapid test, has this been collected? Conditional format for yes, and you could highlight those, and all the yeses would show up a green, for example. All right. Yes, definitely. I know this is a, definitely something more advanced, but it's, it's really useful. So I'll just undo all that. There we go. So I'm highlighting all my text or all my numbers in the range I want, which is all of these attendant states. And I'll go to format. And it's right here, conditional formatting. And here's the information. So applies to the range B2 to K24, which is this big, huge list of numbers. And the rules are, I want to format this cell if it's equal to the number one in this case. And right now, it's currently set to fill that color with this light green. I could choose strike throughs or font size change or text color change but I'm going to change it to a red color. And I'll say done. You can say here's my rule. Value is equal to 1 for B2 to K24. I'll close this little window. And now I can see where all my number ones are on this sheet. So Michael, if that's the case, you could create a couple other rules to get yes. indicate, like blue for two or those kind of things. So like if you needed to work with certain students for certain reasons and then you move up to the next group, that kind of thing you can do it that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can have multiple at the same time. So if I had, I think it's still selected actually. Yeah, if I do the same thing, I'll go format and conditional formatting add another rule. So at B2 to K24 is still selected all my information. And now I wanna say if this is equal to five so that would be good because it means you attended all five classes on that day we'll give that a nice green color and we've got two conditional formatting rules going on at the same time i'll close that so we can see which students attended on days where they had five classes they attended and some that had just one now if you do a whole lot of them it tends to get a bit messy but you know it does work. Yes or no is a really good one, especially if you're doing surveys or questions answered from people. All right. Uh, let's see. Autofill, copy name list. Yeah, that's most of what I had to go through with the information. Does anyone have any more questions about any of this? I know this is a lot. I definitely went through it. So if you want me to go through anything or have any questions about even specific case scenarios that you're thinking about doing yourself, I can definitely try to answer them. I'm going to end our recording, Michael, and then yeah, anybody sure. can feel free to, to ask maybe specific questions or anything like that. But for anybody who does have to head out, thank you so much. We do have a few minutes left, of course, until 8 o'clock, but I'm going to go ahead and end that recording here.